All right, let's get to the biggest news of the week. Palantir and Google have launched a collaboration. This is official. Uh, Google Cloud CEO uh, did a, a little short video promotion with Sham Sankar, COO of Palantir. And essentially, the Google Cloud Marketplace is going to be offering Foundry to be built on top of it. The sort of way I interpret this is that it's a multi-channel sales distribution for Palantir to access all of the GCP clients. And Google, in launching this collaboration, is not just like, putting their logo on the app store, because you could always do that on the Google Cloud Marketplace app store, but rather they're saying, hey, we're, we're, we're co-signing this product as one of the premier products that can integrate with their operational workflows on top of GCP's main compute layer. Um, so really, really interesting stuff, exciting stuff. We saw this happen a couple months ago where there was this like leaked image of Google recommending Palantir to clients. Obviously it was in the works. And I wanna have a lot of sort of perspectives on the bear case I'm seeing on this, which is Google's just trying to poach all their information and eventually they'll get rid of them and sort of the bull case of this and what this means for, for growth in the future. So Sachin, let's start with you. What is your uh, take on Google and Palantir? So I think one thing which everyone has to be very clear on this part is that at this point, the war of hyperscaler is more between the big three, which is the AWS, Microsoft, and Google. When I discuss with companies that has partnered with the Google Cloud, in a strategic way, I mean, they really love the product. They said that they liked and they, in their assessment, Google Cloud technically is superior to both AWS and Amazon. Now the challenge is because most of my clients are in the energy sector and Google is very sensitive when it comes to provide continuing service or all the technology to oil and gas companies. So uh, a lot of them are pivoting with the lack of support from Google. And when they are going to AWS and Microsoft, they realize that it's pain and they are they are coming up, but they are not at the same level when it comes for pure performance. But where they excel is the go-to market. That means they are more flexible. They are more ready to sit with you and to work with you. So clients are ready to work with Microsoft and AWS despite the product is bad inferior. So Google, is actually struggling in B2B market in terms of growth relative to these two companies. They have a better product. Okay. And the only way Google can increase uh, their consumption and their uses if they start tackling the use cases, which no one else is tackling at this point. And it is also important that Google probably has one of the best knowledge graph map solution other than Palantir. Yet Google decided to go with Palantir, which says that the kind of solution Palantir is, is, is harnessing is actually built for very complex case that Google itself feel that, okay, it's better to have Palantir on board and let's take Palantir to the clients, tackle these, uh, these high end uh, customization and complex uh, use cases so that we can increase our consumption. Google sees Palantir as a hack at this particular point to increase its consumption and client base and that is the key message coming out of it we have discussed in past that which of the big tech is more positioned to compete with the palantir and, and more often the name of google will come ahead of aws and uh, microsoft now google is coming here and not only google is doing it i mean they are actively promoting it which is telling it's not like this okay i want 20 partnerships so palantir is also one they are saying this is a key partnership so they are, they are positioning themselves that we see Palantir as a hack and they are telling their customers. And you see, even from ideological point of view, what Alex Karp says about Silicon Valley, I mean, ideological point of view, Palantir and Google are very different companies. Every criticism that Alex Karp make of, uh, of Silicon Valley is, is directed towards Google. And yet, I mean, these two companies are coming together in a strategic context in a commercial sense, it's a, it's a very big statement, in my opinion. Well, what's the that what's the benefit to Google? I guess I'll, I'll frame this question. Uh, Sachin, you can give your thoughts on that, and then Chris, you can go. What's the benefit to Google doing this? Like, how does so, it help them? So the thing, the benefit, see, for example, see, I have a better product, and I go to my client, and I say my product is better than Microsoft. The client says, so what? What we want to get it done, though it's pain, but Microsoft can also do it. AWS can also do it. The only way you are going to to prove your product is superior and extract value out of it, that you start doing use cases, which these two companies are not doing, or they don't have partner ecosystem to do it. So Google wants to, Google is taking Palantir because they want to take the game to the next level. So we are going to solve things which nobody else is solving. 
there is no other point for Google to partner with Palantir. I mean, Palantir, with, even before this partnership, you can use Palantir on Google. It's not Palantir was banned on Google. They are saying, so the only, you see, they are, Azure started behind Google in cloud. Okay, AWS was already ahead. Google had a better product, but Azure, despite an inferior product related to these two companies and mostly in relative term and starting from behind, right now it is the fastest growing B2B cloud in hyperscaler at this point. And a company like Google, it's not something they can easily take. So the only way they can change it, so Google DNA is very simple. We try things which nobody else tries. Microsoft DNA is different. Microsoft is we commoditize things, but we see everyone else is working and we commoditize as fast as possible. Okay, like for example, if you take how when Google introduced Google Workspace, right from the starting, they focus very much on collaborative working. Office 365 adopted it far later when they saw, okay, Google is doing it, let's commoditize it. So this is a very different DNA of companies we are talking about. The only way Google can change the, the type for its uh, cloud performance, if the client says, okay, this can only be done on Google. Okay, Google has another, I mean, everyone knows, even Elon Musk admits they have one of the best AI in the market. Okay, they have a very good uh, knowledge map of themselves. Okay, now something like Palantir coming in, that means they can tackle the courses, they can tackle the, the complexities, which uh, a lot of uh, companies cannot. And another thing is like Google also has a lot of lobbying power. And people don't realize that Google has more lobbying power than, than Exxon at this particular point. I mean, Exxon lobbying is, is no way near to what Google can, can do at this particular point. So they can influence a uh, lot of decisions, a lot of policy making that can eventually help them. Uh, and, and, you know, also like the, this whole idea around the ESG, because like, you remember the GCP was very sensitive when it comes for the working with defense and all these things in past. That was a popular way of doing things. I don't think uh, people are very okay having that kind of uh, attitude right now. So the, the Google and Palantir coming together, it is giving a lot of credibility to Palantir and what Palantir does. Google is not saying, okay, they said, okay, oil and gas is evil, will not give all the services to oil and gas directly. I mean, they made a statement about it, their AI will not be available or some of the technology will not be available to the oil and gas. If they see Palantir as an evil company, they will not do a strategic partnership. So these are like two, two opposite poles in terms of ideology. And this is how they have been positioned by Wall Street and Silicon Valley and uh, extreme left uh, uh, Democrats. But if these coming together, they were already working together. They, they can work together. That was already in place. They are saying, if we work together in unison, we can do things which others cannot do. So that's to me is the major statement. Chris, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with such and all the points that you made were pretty much right along what I was thinking. Um, the way that I would phrase it, though, is that I would say the name of the game is compute. Google is a money making organization. OK, so if you're a money making organization, you cannot turn away clients, no matter how ideological you are. Guess what? You're a business. Question is, how do you maintain your ideological, you know, persona? without getting your own hands dirty. Well, you work with someone who already has their hands dirty, right? If you look at Palantir already works with oil and natural gas companies, right? All over the all over the world. It works with the defense uh, dep department. Now guess what? Those defense contracts are huge, right? No one no one's saying like, "Hey, I don't want money," but Google's like, "Okay, look, if I don't partner with Palantir, Microsoft will pa partner with Palantir and they'll sell the government all this compute." Right? They'll send the defense. Do you know how much money is compute and how, how how high of a margin that is? So right now, all three of the 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 major cloud providers, they're all jockeying for Palantir to be partnered with them because they want Palantir to say, oh yeah, you should use Google Cloud as your compute, or you should use Microsoft Azure as your compute. Or, you know, at the end of the day, it's still the decision of the client on which, which compute that they want to go with. But Palantir is, a, is in a much better position right now. So all the contracts that Palantir gets that we hear, oh, Palantir got a billion dollar contract with blah, 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 blah. 
Well, guess what? Palantir is going to give you software, but there's also going to be a lot of compute that's attached to all that money that's being uh, generated by that SaaS product. So who gets that? Who gets that revenue? Who gets that compute revenue? Well, now Google need, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, Google needs money. And who better right now? Because Google right now is probably scared to death that one, Azure is taking away their business. Amazon is strengthening themselves and they're getting, you know, they're taking away some of the business, right? For Google, from Google Cloud. And Google Cloud has pretty much hobbited themselves. I mean, like hobbled themselves away in a corner saying, oh yeah, there are certain people we won't work with. But the ones that we are working with, like other tech companies, bro, half of them are going out of business, right? They're not going to be paying for compute. If all these tech companies that Google's partnered with for the last five years, if half of them are VC backed, if that VC money gets turned off, guess what? That that compute is gone. And if that compute is gone, Google's got to make up for that revenue somewhere. The one thing that Google does not want to do right now is report a quarter over quarter or year over year net reduction in revenue. And you know it's already happening. I spoke to a few people in New York, you know, where um, there's tons of market. What do you think every company right now, what's the first thing they're going to start cutting in higher uh, a higher rate environment if their business is not doing well? The first thing that goes is marketing, right? Ads, what is Google? Baby. Yeah. What does Google make money off of? It makes money off of ads. So guess what? If they can somehow supplement some of that income by selling higher, more compute, that ends up saving them some, you know, some pain in the long run. So yeah, right now, if you look at a lot of companies whose entire business model is based on ads during the recession, they're going to take huge hits. And Google doesn't want to get caught up on the end of that.